I am Aishu Bharadwaj, Assistant Editor at Trade Promotion Council of India, and I welcome you all to the new episode of Green Guardians. As we are moving forward, you know that we are bringing more and more inspiring stories of thought leaders and people who are associated from the sector of green energy. And today we have another inspiring stories of none other than Mr. Siddharth Mayur, who is the CEO, MD, and founder of H2E Power System. Welcome, Mr. Mayur. How are you today? Very well, uh, Aishu. Thank you for having me uh, with you today. Pleasure, sir. Uh, without uh, taking much of your time, I will ask my very first question. What motivated you to establish H2E Power System, sir? Well, for me, the motivation uh, or the inspiration was something totally different. It, uh, it is more like uh, coming out directly out of a Bollywood flick. Uh, so it was Diwali of 2009. And uh, um, I belong to a small city called Jalgaon in Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my ancestral village is about 60 kilometers away from Jalgaon in a place called Chopra. Okay. Uh, so it was after Diwali Puja that I called my grandmother to exchange greetings and she was complaining that uh, they did not have electricity and uh, they had to do the Diwali Puja in candlelight. I don't know, you know, it, it, in those days, of course, it was very, very common that we didn't have electricity. Uh, even right. today, it is not uncommon, but it, the situation has improved. But uh, it was a common thing, but I don't know what, it, it, it just hit me in the wrong way or the right way, as I call it. Uh, and, uh, that day, um, on Diwali, I did not eat food at home, and I was very restless. And, and I said that uh, uh, this cannot be the reality of times, um, that uh, we are you know, uh, enjoying air-conditioned places, and 60 kilometers away, our families are living um, in abject energy poverty. So mm -hmm. that is uh, something that uh, kind of changed the course of my life, that changed the way I was thinking, I was no way connected to the electrical and or uh, clean energy or hydrogen or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in a different business segment, but uh, uh, that night, uh, you know, uh, gazing at the stars and the moon, I said to myself that uh, we have to do something, cannot rely on only on the government because mm -hmm. the government has a lot of other things to do. Exactly. You know, the, the easiest thing we can say is that the government is not doing anything. But uh, very few of us take the mantle in our hand and say that, let us help the government to help us. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what started my journey into uh, this entire uh, thing called as good energy solutions, as I call it. Mm -hmm. That's great to know, sir. And uh, I think uh, the motivation is, is enough, you know, to lead a company. And I'm sure that H2E power system is doing great in this sector. Moving on to right. my next, yeah. exactly, sir. Uh, moving on to my next question: How does uh, your company manage to offer affordable clean energy technologies to a wider audience? Uh, you know, while maintaining a focus on innovation as well as advancement. Uh, you know, Aishu, I always have this problem with uh, the word the word affordable, okay. and. Uh, the problem, uh, it's not a problem as in, you know, uh, we don't believe in affordability as a subject. Mm -hmm. But talk about anything new, we always say that uh, it has to be cheaper than whatever we are getting right now. And then uh, suddenly right. the expectations uh, rise. Mm -hmm. And to whoever tells me that, uh, is your technology expensive or is mm -hmm. your technology cheap? I always use this uh, statement to them that, you know, the cost of... Uh, electricity is far lesser than the price we pay for darkness. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, that being said, uh, we as a company, uh, since uh, the beginning of the company, we mm -hmm. uh, always a company with um, minimal resources. I do not come from a background where we have a lot of money which is available to us. And mm -hmm. was the Indian startup ecosystem so well developed in 2009, 2010. Um, when uh, the funds were coming very easy. Mm -hmm. uh, to be very honest, the funds are not coming easy even today, uh, despite mm -hmm. uh, what is happening in the industry. Um, so uh, it necessitated uh, the frugal innovations. You mm -hmm. know? So whatever we did, we always tried to save cost. I would not say that we ever cut corners, but we always tried to innovate to save cost. Mm -hmm. We hired 
people who are kind of startups like us, we hire people right from college. Uh, we hire people from small towns. Uh, we train them. We put extra effort in them. And that uh, entire uh, philosophy or the entire uh, culture of frugality mm -hmm. has started right from the day zero. And whatever we are doing, uh, we always uh, mantra in the company is that the customer has to ultimately pay for whatever we do. Uh, extra cup of tea that you drink in the office, the customer pays for it. All right, at the end of the day, okay. because that's that's loaded to the price of the uh, product. So we chose a difficult path, but uh, we chose a path not to say that uh, we are expensive, but to find out ways and means how we could be inexpensive. Definitely not cheap. Mm -hmm. So what we have done, or you know what we have uh, uh, effected uh, or, or the period of time is uh, that we worked with uh, several institutes, whether it is institutes in Germany like uh, Fraunhofer or with the institutes like IITs in India. Uh, and we have taken the best technologies or the best techniques that were available in countries like Germany. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned because when you talk about engineering, they, they still have that edge. You know, right. we, we Indians definitely have the capability to uh, match nice. them, but they, they definitely have an edge. So we have taken those technologies, uh, we brought those technologies to India, we worked on with the Indian ecosystem to see how we can reduce the cost of uh, those products and not mm -hmm. only the product, but also every component. So we are engaged in developing every uh, single component that goes into our product. Like we uh, develop uh, fuel cells, we develop electrolyzers right. or produce them. Uh, so every component that goes into it, uh, let's mm -hmm. take a laptop example, you know, for, yeah. our, for what I'm using to chat right now, mm -hmm. uh, the laptop has, uh, has an Intel chip or a motherboard, and then it has a battery, it has a okay. keyboard. So similarly, uh, electrolyzer has about 390 components. Okay. And we are working to uh, localize each and every component. And, and uh, I think by the end of 2025 or early 2026, almost 100% of these components will be manufactured in India. So I'm not talking about assembly in India. Um, I'm talking mm -hmm. about manufacturing in India. We are also innovating on materials. If there is a particular material which is not available in India, for example, if uh, there is a lithium, just take an example, which is available in DRC or in China, mm -hmm. uh, we work with Indian institutes to find out alternative materials that are abundantly available in India. So right from uh, the material side, we are working on localization. When, you know, if, if you see my screen, you read this statement called Swadeshi Urja Swavlambi Bharat. Yes. And then I that statement uh, way back in 2009, we are talking Atmanirbhar India now. Yes. But uh, it, it clearly meant that till the time India cannot produce its own energy and mm -hmm. the backward supply chain, we cannot be a self-reliant nation. So it, you exactly. have to have a Swadeshi only then Bharat Kwan can be Swavalambi because energy is the key to human survival and, and we import close to $200 billion worth of energy. So, you know, th that's been our way of working and uh, we have uh, therefore uh, created the ecosystem where we can produce a product at a very inexpensive price. Uh, we invest heavily into research and development and that R&D investment has paid off because then it is helping us reduce the cost. And uh, then going into the end product or the end use of the product, we are mm -hmm. looking at different industry segments like my village still remains the prime focus for the work that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, so farmer, I belong to a farming family and I believe that uh, we all of us, I mean, not us, our existence to the farmers because it is their efforts which brings uh, food to our table. Uh, so bringing them to energy independence. Yeah. Okay. No, I was com com yeah. com completing yeah. my answer. I said that uh, mm -hmm. it is the investment in research and mm -hmm. investment into the end solution where right. we take the customer as the focus point and not technology as the focus point and uh, build solutions which are not only uh, affordable but which are sustainable. See, uh, right end of the day, you cannot be penny wise and pound foolish. You cannot say that uh, it is very cheap. So, you mm -hmm. know, uh, therefore I always use the word inexpensive. I never want to build a product that is cheap. You want to build an inexpensive product. Um, I mean, uh, 
that's great to know sir first and uh, not just you're promoting lean energy in india you are contributing to uh, you know visions like atmanirbhar bharat and made in india and uh, vocal for local i think h2 is he, is h2 is contributing to all these uh, you know uh, visions and with this i want to know um could you share a recent instance where h2e emphasized on innovation and research and development which led to a notable breakthrough in clean energy solutions uh let me take uh, take you into the component side you know uh, sure. the solution comes much later right. but uh, on the component side uh, there is one component which is a very key component uh, going into a fuel cell or an electrolyzer mm -hmm. and uh, uh, there are less than two suppliers in the world for this there's generally is a 30 40 week lead time to get this component okay and uh, we managed to uh, develop that component we are now working on changing the material itself and uh, by next year we will reduce uh, the cost of that component to 1/10 mm -hmm. uh, dollar terms so in rupee terms it will be even a greater reduction because the dollar keeps on fluctuating right and uh, we will be able to build an ecosystem with that component where the component is available at a 6 day notice period as against a 40 week notice okay so that breakthrough that uh, we have done which uh, will in the near future help us reduce the cost of our end product and also to increase our efficiency so you know this is mm -hmm. one example oh, when you talk about a product mm -hmm. or a component mm -hmm. when you're talking about a solution uh there are two specific solutions we have developed one is called uh, the uh, it's a power trailer we call it bj urja that's okay. the name of uh, that particular product mm -hmm. it is a, a hybrid uh, power generator for the farmers for an individual farm okay it is uh, built with a fuel cell and a solar and a battery it's a mm -hmm. hybrid solution using biogas as and uh, to uh, to free the farmer of all the problems that the farmer has and that can convert a farm into a factory convert a farmer into a msme so mm -hmm. if you just look at 180 million farmers who are cultivators in this country mm -hmm. uh, and if all of them become energy independent and all of them become an sme mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine what kind of uh, india will have so you know that that's one innovation that we've done using the technology mm -hmm. the second innovation is have a dependent decentralized charging solution for electric vehicles see today okay. electric vehicles we always say if you are using a ev amp you think mm -hmm. that you are clean and green but when right. you are drawing the power from the grid mm -hmm. you necessarily are burning more carbon than what a bus right. vehicle would do Mm -hmm. uh, so a uh, independent infrastructure which is not uh, uh, harming the grid mm -hmm. and which is green at the same time. so there again we built a hybrid system which is a fuel cell and a battery mm -hmm. hybrid along with uh, solar mm -hmm. and uh, we are using bio uh, so the idea is that the city's uh, waste should power a city's vehicle uh, so you know with that concept uh, mm -hmm. i think there is a disruption that we are bringing uh, and also reducing the cost of the end ownership of energy so right. these are you know uh, two examples on the solution side and one example on the component side which ultimately mm -hmm. will you know bring down the cost of the equipment as well great sir and um, i really wish uh, h2e uh, all the best and keep working you know uh, on the uh, end side to provide the solution so moving on to my uh, another question as we know that the green uh, this green hydrogen and alternative fuel segment is gaining a lot of prominence these days and uh, the question would be how does your company navigate the challenges and opportunities in these areas to you know deliver practical solutions see that's a very interesting question uh, aishu and uh, also the need of the hour uh, if i would put it that way Mm -hmm. uh, i mentioned earlier, <clears throat> earlier that our import bill is close to 200 billion us dollars yeah majority of that is in terms of fuel i believe about more than uh, uh, 75 or 80 percent of um, our crude needs are imported mm -hmm. and uh, almost 56 percent of our gas is imported 
Yes. That gives that opportunity. If India has to become energy independent, which means that the opportunity for Indian entrepreneurs is a two hundred billion dollar opportunity. Exactly. So if you are not going to spend oh, that kind of money outside, we will spend that money uh, uh, internally, and uh, that's where we see a, a giant of an opportunity. Now, using the technologies that we have, uh, the electrolyzer specifically, mm -hmm. and also. Uh, we work on uh, waste uh, as a subject. Mm -hmm. So with both these technologies, uh, we have a potential uh -huh, uh, to make different kind of hydrocarbons. Hydrogen, of course, we can with electrolyzers. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we can also do a carbon capture and produce synthetic gas, which is nothing but the crude that we import. And yeah. from that synthetic gas, we can produce a variety of hydrocarbons. Uh, we as a company are working on producing SAF, uh, which is sustainable aviation fuel, okay. which is the fuel for the future uh, for aviation industry. Mm -hmm. By the time aviation industry gets on hydrogen uh, or gets to battery electric, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take a little while. In the meantime, they should use a carbon neutral fuel, which can be right. SAF. Uh, we are working on e-methanol, e even uh, working on producing other value-added hydrocarbons, which go into the uh, polymer industries or waxes that get into the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple uh, opportunities that uh, can emerge out of this. And uh, that's why when we say energy independence, it is not just producing the electricity in an yeah. independent manner. Even the fuel has to be produced. So just imagine a uh, situation that your office in Delhi where you're sitting right now, mm -hmm. uh, imagine that uh, there is a fuel cell and an electrolyzer sitting in the basement of your office building mm. and it is produced enough hydrogen and or enough fuel that can drive all the vehicles that come to the office and give you power uh, for all the electrical needs that the entire building may have mm -hmm. so you know that you know that's the perfect world that uh, we can imagine and really, that perfect world thankfully is not a fantasy anymore Thank this you. is something that is going to become a reality and very very soon Exactly, sir. Um, so, um, moving on to my uh, next question. Beyond business, how does H2E contribute to broader uh, environmental and societal goals through collaboration or, you know, through initiatives in the world of clean energy? Uh, well, I would not say we. that's a secondary activity for us. That's a primary activity for us. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever work we do, um, uh, to begin with, whatever production facilities also uh, that we are building in India, uh, you know, my manufacturing plant is going to be 100% carbon neutral from day zero. Okay. So, really start uh, uh, from that uh, particular thought. Mm -hmm. And not only that, we are working with our uh, partners who are our vendors and supply chain uh, developers. Mm -hmm. We work with them to also make sure that they will also become carbon neutral. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the back end, we are working on um, doing that. The product we are developing for the farmers, for rural India, uh, on alternate fuels, uh, is all contributing towards uh, uh, mitigation of uh, the climate crisis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always say that, uh, you know, the world came together during the COVID times, uh -huh just because uh, 5 million people died and you know we kept the world shut down for three months almost four and a half million people die because of climate change every year i don't remember anybody has shut down the world even for one hour right so sir. it is our deep now that the earth is suffering as well the earth is also going through a climate pandemic mm -hmm. so we should come together to develop a climate change vaccine and and i think that is the single largest contribution that uh, h2e is trying to make uh, towards climate as a subject and uh, talking about our social uh, commitment uh, we are working on a very interesting program other than the climate change vaccine it's a program called Urja Udyami program okay uh, in English it translates into an energy uh, energy entrepreneur program okay where uh, over a period of nine to twelve months we will train a person, whether it is a female or a male, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, we train them in becoming an energy entrepreneur and they can then take care of the last mile connectivity. So they will, in effect, become dealers and distributors for companies like mine 
or any other renewable or clean tech company mm -hmm. and go into uh, every uh, every area, every village, every town, every sector in a city, and they will make sure that their region becomes uh, net zero. Mm -hmm. The concept each one make one. So my idea is, uh, and my vision is that by the end of this decade, we should produce at least 100,000 Urja Udyamis. 100,000. And these 100,000 by 2047, uh, which is the year that Honorable Prime Minister has declared that India should become energy independent, uh, uh, we aspire and we will work towards making at least 100 million Indians energy independent and net zero. So that will be our single most important contribution to uh, to the climate, to Mother Earth, and uh, to our nation, to the people of our country. So you know that that's a, it. Of course, is a very audacious goal. Uh, I I hope you know we uh, get the strength uh, to deliver on all of these. Mm -hmm. but, but we are very singularly focused, and uh, we are very sincere towards. Uh, these goals, they're, they're just not goals which are there on paper and, you know, we want to earn some brown points, but we want to get on the ground, work on this so that, you know, uh, when I say 100 million people, I'm talking about at least 100,000, 200,000 Indian villages should become energy independent. These okay. 100,000 Urja Udyams should be at least 100,000 or a half a million green jobs for people, you know, okay. have a meaningful community built towards this entire net zero ecosystem. That's that's great, sir. And uh, I only wish that uh, your vision and your aims uh, come true. And uh, you have the right Thank determination you. as well towards it. And with this, I want to ask my last question. So uh, as you have said, uh, you know, at the very start of this interview that uh, not all the things government can do, it's you entrepreneurs which also should contribute to, to this sector. So what, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, what advice would you want to give to, you know, the policymakers to further uplift this sector, especially uh, when it comes to green hydrogen and alternative fuels? I think the policymakers are very well endowed and very distinguished people. So you know, for someone right. as policy to advise them uh, would be a wrong place. Mm -hmm. But uh, we definitely can give assurance to the policymakers that if they are able to create an environment which is conducive to the growth of uh, Indian startups for mm -hmm. startups which are out of uh, Bharat, you know, coming out of the ground, mm -hmm. uh, we will definitely uh, put all the effort that are humanly possible. And even if it is not humanly possible, we still will because we're doing this for the nation, we're doing this for the country, right. doing this for our people. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, whenever I speak to policymakers, uh, go with the zero list of terms. I always tell them that just help us. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't, don't uh, create any policy which will be an impediment. Don't create any policy which is pro uh, uh, outsiders to come into this country and work. Create policies that are pro local entrepreneurs. I mean, I don't have anything against anyone coming from outside. They're definitely mm -hmm. bringing in investments in the country, but. Uh, people coming from outside, technologies coming from outside can work with uh, the startup ecosystem. Right. We can really realize that uh, grand vision that, uh, you know, our Honorable Prime Minister always keeps uh, inspiring us with. And uh, I think uh, uh, we are all set. And I, I speak this uh, for all the startup entrepreneurs that I know and work with. We are all equally passionate and equally committed to the cause of uh, developing this entire ecosystem. Um, that's all for today, sir. And, uh, I think, uh, we have interviewed a lot of people till now. And I personally, uh, I'm personally saying this, that this is one of the most interesting, this is going to be one of the most interesting interviews. And I only wish H2E power systems and you all the very best, sir. You're doing a great job. I think, uh, not just uh, in the green energy sector, you are inspiring the upcoming entrepreneurs. Uh, and this interview is going to inspire a lot of people. All the best, Thank sir. You, Thank you. I hope so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aishu. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. This was uh, indeed a great chat. And uh, I wish uh, your, you and your company all the best. Thank and, you. Thank you very yeah. much. Welcome, sir. And for our audience, that's all for today's episode of Green Guardians. Stay tuned for more inspiring stories and until then, keep supporting sustainability. Thank you.
Thank you.